This Sunday is a special Sunday in the life of the church. It is Ascension Sunday. It is the Sunday that happens the Sunday before Pentecost. And a lot of times we as, uh, as Protestants um, kind of gloss over the Ascension. And so I think it's always important for us when we have this opportunity that comes up to recognize its importance and to ponder how it pertains to our own life. So I want to read to you uh, one of the two scriptures that is on the Ascension. Uh, both are written by the uh, author of Luke and Acts. And this is found in Acts chapter 1, starting with verse 1, continuing on to verse 11. You're welcome to follow along uh, in your pew Bible, Bible you brought with you, smartphone, tablet, or just listen, uh, as you will, to the Word of God. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Sweet Holy Spirit, may you be present in this place. May you fill each of us to overflowing with your love, with your kindness, with your goodness, with your mercy, with your truth, with your peace, with your wisdom. May we be all things magnified for you, Lord Jesus. May my words not be my own, but may they be yours. May my mind not be my own, but may it be yours. Most of all, sweet Holy Spirit, may my heart not be my own, but may it be wholly thine, broken and open and honest before these people of God. Amen. So, as we have been traveling along um, this post-Easter time together, it has been an opportunity for us to travel with Jesus in those post-Easter Sunday resurrection experiences. A lot has happened in those 40 uh, days since Jesus was raised from the dead. A lot has happened in terms of who he has appeared to, to Mary Magdalene, to the Twelve, to Peter, to John, the beloved disciple, to, uh, to uh, of course, to Thomas uh, up in the upper room. And we see that encounter, of course, with uh, the, those that were on the road, those two disciples, uh, to Emmaus. We see it in uh, a piece of baked fish that is given to Jesus when he is hungry and famished. We see it uh, in many ways, great and small. 
and we see all of these experiences, and it's as if the disciples have gotten to this point where they are trying to figure out what is next in what Jesus is going to do, and they have just started to get comfortable, and all of a sudden he is taken up from them. The very moment when they are kind of getting settled in to the new normal and how things will be, things change. Everyone any get like that in their life where they finally get everything figured out and everything settled and everything in order, all your ducks in a row, all your squirrels in a line, however it is that you organize. And something, someone, somewhere comes along and upends it, right? And the way that you had grown accustomed to life has been changed. You know, um, one of the great gifts of motherhood uh, is that it upends our life with the way that things were before and then the things that come after, that change, that change us. Uh, so that we experience love in all of these new and fascinating and, and interesting and wonderful and beautiful and sometimes painful ways, but the ways in which we have been accustomed to life before and then after have been changed completely, and we are a different person. We are different people, and these disciples are witnesses to this change that is occurring. You see, they're still trying to figure things out. They're still trying to work through how all of this is going to take place. And they, they think that maybe what they need to do is maybe there are things that Jesus can teach them. Maybe this is the time, they say, when you are coming uh, into your glory, when you are coming into your kingdom, they say, they say, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? You see, there are still those that are living, as it were, in a way, in the past. Is this the time when all this stuff is going to take place? And Jesus has told them before, and he tells them again, it's not for you to know the time or the periods, the places, you just, just go about doing the work that you need to be doing. Stop looking for all of these signs. There's all this stuff that's going to transpire beforehand, but would you quit focusing on all the stuff that's going to happen and all the stuff that has happened and all the stuff that is in the news that is transpiring? Please, please, please quit focusing on those things. Why are you so focused on these little things when there are bigger things to worry about and more important things to do as witnesses of me, as witnesses of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But they ask him, Lord, is this the time? Because they are nervous, they are scared, they are unsure, they have gotten to this point of comfortability and all of a sudden this change happens and so honestly genuinely they think maybe this is the time because maybe things the apple cart has been upset enough and he replied of course it is not for you to know the times or periods that the father has set by his own authority but you will receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in jerusalem and all judea and samaria and to the ends of the earth the ends of the earth, of course, reflected at the end of the book of Acts as Paul as Rome. But for us, practically speaking, here in Binbrook, it includes and enfolds us as well. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. You will be my witnesses. You will be my disciples. You will be the one when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Okay, well then, what do we do in the meantime? 
What do we do in this period of change, in this period of disturbance, in this period of unsettlingness, in this period where we know that somehow we need to go and do, but we can't go and do? How is it that this is supposed to work for us? And when he had said this as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. A cloud that took him out of their sight in much the same way that Elijah was taken up in the fiery chariot, in the way that Enoch, it was reported, just went to walk and to be with God, a way in which even Moses, according to Jewish tradition, not Jewish scripture, but Jewish tradition, said that he just did not die but went to be with God. Like Moses like Elijah, like those who had been with Jesus at the transfiguration. Now Jesus is the fulfillment yet again of the law and the prophets as he ascends. And they are waiting and they see him go. Do you ever do that whenever a relative comes to visit? You... When they, when they leave. And I don't know if you all do this anymore, but I remember doing this a lot as I, as I grew up. When I would leave my grandparents' home, what they would do is they would go outside and they would stand at the door and we would leave in the car and we'd be waving and they'd be waving and then they'd wait till we got all the way around the corner before they would go inside. You remember those traditions? That sense of they are always with you until suddenly they're just away. And they are standing there and they are looking at Jesus until all of a sudden they can't see him anymore. And as they are straining their necks, they keep thinking, okay, is there a point where he's going to come back? Did we miss something? Is this just like, are we going to like, is he just kind of like a boomerang coming back? And as they're sitting there, and they're standing there, and they're waiting, two witnesses, again, it's always two in Luke's gospel, two at the tomb, two on the walk to Emmaus, two here at the ascension, two men in white, two angels, as it were, that appear just like men again at the tomb. And they say, men of Galilee, why do you stand up toward Heaven, this Jesus whom you have been looking for, this Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So, on the one hand, Jesus has told them to wait for the Holy Spirit, but on the other, there is uh, another message that the angels are sending and that the angels are telling them, There is not time in this moment for you to stand around looking for and waiting for the next sign and the next symbol and the next situation in which things will finally be as they need to be so that then you can take that leap of faith that you need to take. Now is the moment. I think we all want to have a sign. I think we all want to have that moment crystallized for us. We all want to have that booming voice of God, maybe, that tells us, that shows us, that points us in the direction that we need to go. We want some sort of a sign and a direction. And yet so far and so often we find that we're just looking up in the clouds wondering, when is it going to happen? And the angels say, You are not called to be speculating on when the next sign is. You are called to be witnesses. And when the time comes, the Holy Spirit will fall upon you. And you know, that's an important thing for us to realize because as those who follow after Jesus, a lot of times we think, okay, there's going to be a moment when I've got it all together, right? 
There's going to be a moment when I am truly equipped to deliver the good news of Jesus Christ. There's going to be a moment when I know my scriptures backwards and forwards, and I can say them, and I can quote them, and I can really show people, you know. I, there's going to be a moment when I really, really know my stuff. And the angels say, why are you waiting for a moment? Why are you waiting for a time that is better than this? Maybe it is for such a time as this that God has equipped you for. And when the time is right, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Hang out around here, sure, but be about the work of witnessing. Be about the work of doing what God has called you to do. Be about the work of loving people into relationship with Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We do that in countless ways here at Benbrook. We do that in that table, which I keep praying every single week will finally break on us out in the narthex, full of food. We do that when we lift up our military care uh, veterans and all those who have served. We do that when we lift up people on the prayer chain. We do that in these weekly gatherings that we have, whether it's for fun playing cards, yes, or whether it's at a Bible study breaking bread over snacks and cookies and cake. We do that in so many ways, great and small. We do that in cards. We do that in calls. We do that in prayers and prayer bears. We do that in ways where we are not straining our necks toward heaven, but we are looking right here on this earth, and we are being these witnesses. How are you being a witness? How are you not waiting for the right moment but how are you living into the moment that you have? How are you loving God where you are at with what you have? If you keep waiting for the perfect moment to do what God has called you to do and to love as Jesus has called you to love, you will never find it. You are simply called to be the presence of Jesus for people where they are at. You will never have all the scripture memorized. You will never have all the theology perfectly worked out. You will never have everything in order. You will never have your ducks in a row. But you will always have Jesus to go with you. And when the time is right, you will have the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon you. And in the meantime... Worry about the basic stuff, the simple stuff, the stuff right in front of you. You know, we say the Lord's Prayer every Sunday. We say it as a community of faith. We say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is, as it already is in heaven. What are you doing so that the kingdom would come upon earth rather than waiting for it to come from heaven? God has called us for this moment. The angels have called us out for this moment. We are called to be the hands and feet of God in Christ for this moment. Go love your mother. Let your mother love you. Be that mothering presence for those for who God is in need. Jesus even was a mother figure, as we see in, I believe, Matthew's Gospel. Lo, how I have desired to gather you as a hen gathers her chicks to her. Jerusalem, he says. So go and be that loving motherly presence for those in your life who need to hear it and who need to know it. Don't wait for a sign from above. Be the sign so that others may see Jesus in you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Receive now this benediction. 
What are you waiting for? Why are you standing here? Why are you looking up to the heaven when Jesus has called you where you are at to be witnesses to Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria, and the ends of the earth? Go therefore and love as Jesus has called you to do.